Hi, I'm George Page, and this is Bruce, a border collie in charge of his flock of sheep. His sheep are St. Croix, a breed known for its tameness and successful breeding rate. To herd them, a border collie like Bruce is considered the best in the business. We'd expect the dog and the sheep to be enemies, predator and prey. But during thousands of years of selective breeding, man has changed the fundamental relationship between them. The prey is now tamed. The predator stands guard. And the two have been constant companions ever since. The restraint, cooperation, and herding ability of the wolves is even stronger in the sheepdog. As they set off to encircle their flock, it is simple for the shepherd, now pack leader, to control the hunt and suppress the final act, the kill. But sheepdogs are willing to listen, and to watch them work with their trainer is a riveting spectacle. By selective breeding and good training, the shepherd has enhanced the natural instinct. The teamwork is based on communication, respect, and love. Like wolves, dogs communicate vocally. Whistles and words of command instruct the dog which way to move. Long one to stop. Left hand command. Whistle to follow on. Here in the highlands of Scotland, the border collie has truly proved its worth. The relationship between dog and sheep is a delicate one, and sometimes it breaks down. But three dogs are the average run. Get three dogs together, and something comes over them, a kind of a hysteria. It's usually a, a terrier and usually a larger dog, either a collie or an Alsatian, that make up the pair. And the little dog usually goes for the front of the ewe, and the big dog usually goes at the back of the ewe. The owners don't seem to realize that at home their pets are soft and kind and gentle. But once they get out in a country environment where the wind's blowing and, uh, and out in the open fields, nature itself makes them quite different. You can look at your own little dog in the house and think what a wonderful dog he is, but I, I can assure you, he's a killer when he gets in the company of other dogs. Man has manipulated, molded, and changed the sheep from an astute wild animal into the docile creature it is today. He has transformed a savvy carnivore into a quick and able partner. Sheep, dog, and man are bound by a complex web of interdependence of loyalty, responsibility, and trust. The thing that makes Ben fairly unique is that he's honesty. He's absolutely honest and trustworthy in every way. When you do your work on the farm with him, he tries his heart out to please you and do his work. And he's got a lot of courage and stamina and intelligence. Everything really that, that I want in a dog. So this year, he's developed a sore shoulder and I took him to the vet and they found he's got arthritis in his uh, left shoulder. And that's a disaster, because he won't be able to do the rest of his work in the farm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely the last year for work in the fells. And he's in pain, which is, is really sort of upsetting. Uh, so I've got to be really careful. But uh, from competition, my big hopes for Ben were to run him at the national. And this year there's a world championship as well. And Ben should have been at his best. This could be the last year for competitions because one thing is I won't be able to train him as hard as I normally would for a competition. So uh, I'm going to have to lay off him a little bit and just rely on his natural ability and to use his brains. Goodbye. He's got the authority, he wants to be in control, but he never wants to be unkind to anything. So he, he will bite a sheep, but only as a last resort in self-defense or in an effort to move it. Come by, come by. He tends to know the difference between a sheep that's slow because it's ill and one that's defiant. And a sheep that's slow and ill, he gives it lots of time. Whereas a sheep that's defiant, he'll step right up and confront it and show his authority. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Get up. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Get up. Come on. Come on. 
Ha! Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Come on, Ben. Get up. Ben herds by using an intense stare. This border collie trait, coupled with a predatory posture, gets the message across without bites or barks. Ben! Come on, Ben! There's actually four commands that we use, four basic commands for working the sheep. The first one is go left, which is the traditional command for that is come by. Come by, lie down, come by, lie down. The other one is go to the right, the traditional command for that is away. Keep away, lie down. Keep away, lie down. To move straight onto the sheep is walk on or get up. And uh, that'll do to call them back off the sheep. I'll do bed. I'll do bed. I'll You've got to be careful in the way that you give the dog the commands. If you give the commands in a harsh, quick way, that's the type of movement you'll get from the dog. But if you give the command in a nice, gentle way, then the dog learns to associate that with a nice move. So what you ask for is what you get. Good, good, good lad. That's the stuff. Ready now, lie down. Lie down, that'll do. I think this could be Ben's last chance to do anything major in competition, just because of his arthritis. I think the shoulder could affect him. And if he gets difficult shape, no matter how good the handling dog is, you know, they don't have a chance. It's the English National Sheepdog Trials. There are 150 contenders, but only 15 dogs will be winners. Will Ben be among them? Well, I'm feeling a little bit nervous just now. I've already watched some big names fall by the wayside, and uh, Ben's a dog that gets nervous. If he realizes I'm nervous, he gets nervous, so I've shut him away in the car. Before I go to get him out, I have to get myself under control and get a clear head and a clear, clear brain so I don't sort of pass it on to Ben when I take him out. Planes in her day to day work. But there we go. Number 30 next in the programme. Derek Scrimger. Derek Scrimger with his seven year old uh, Ben. One of the things that worries me today is Ben, he's been drawn in the middle of the day. And it's a warm day and uh, it could affect his stamina. Come by. Good lad. Ben. Lie down. Good boy. Come on, Ben. Shh, come up, Ben. Walk on. Walk on, Ben. Lie down. In the course, Ben has to fetch, drive, and separate the sheep. Come in here, Ben. I'll do this, this. Watch it. Good lads. Good. Lie down. Penning the sheep is the biggest challenge for Ben. The sheep are stubborn. Lie down. Lie down. It's not easy. Away. Lie down. Keep away. Lie down. Ben finally Lie. herds them into the pen. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Keep out. Well, right, a completed course there for Hunter number 30, Derek Scringer. From Keswick in Cumbria. It went uh, better than I'd planned, really, so I'm really, really pleased. The judges tally the scores. Derek and his family examine the results. Ben's performance rates in the top 15. This qualifies Ben for the World Championships. For Ben and Derek, making it to the World Championships is bittersweet. It's a little bit sad because Ben with his shoulder problem, this could be his last trial and he's coming up to his best years really and he's not going to have those. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Even when he's too old to work or compete, Ben will be at Derek's side. He's the first working dog on Derek's farm who'll make the transition to family pet. I knew when I saw Ben that he had a lot of talent and uh, I've got a huge admiration for him. And I regard them as a sort of character. If dogs were the equivalent to people, I know Ben would be sort of cleverer than I am. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I've got lots of admiration for them. You don't want a robust kind of dog at this time of the year. You want something that's in good command and sensible. 
But he also yeah. won the dog that'll catch a lamb if you can. Because yeah. if you've got a dog that'll catch a lamb, it can cause you a big lot of trouble. But both of them two will catch lambs. I'm Dave Baxter, and I've been a shepherd 50 years, and I live at Angry Harford. I went in here. The number of sheep per man's still a lot yet, because one man's doing a two or three men's job now. It's really, it's just the way, the way it's went. 40 years or so ago, you would have had, certainly you would have had one shepherd every, say, 500 ewes on the hill. Um, nowadays you're talking about a thousand, fifteen hundred, maybe even two thousand ewes per shepherd. Well, there wasn't, everything wasn't in that big a hurry in them days when there was more men to, and the farms and every hill had a shepherd on it in them days. Now there's one shepherd to three or four hills now. Well, I can think of one uh, valley in the Cheviots where 40 years ago, probably even less than that, there were over 20 shepherds working in that one valley. Um, today, there's not a single full-time shepherd living in the valley. Um, there are two, um, a farmer and a shepherd, that actually cover that area. So, uh, an amazing change. Ten miles up the Cokert Valley from Angrihof lies one of the biggest farms in the area. It's staffed by two shepherds. My name's Stuart Wallace and I've been shepherding now for 27 years. We're right in the middle of Lamentine now and I'm thoroughly enjoying every minute of it. But when a lamb comes into the world, its front legs come with its nose end out that way. And it might be a leg back, it might be both legs back, or it might be everything's there and it's just too big a lamb to come out and it needs a bit of help. So that's why really I'm employed to save them, and up to now, I have done. Well, sheep's very much like human beings. You get good mothers, you get bad mothers. You get good lambs, you get bad lambs. You get good kids, you get bad kids. They're very much like human beings, in a way. My name's Gwen Wallace, and I've been um, shepherding full-time for 15 years. Uh, I come from Anglesey, North Wales, little island on top of Wales. But I wasn't um, born and bred on a farm. My mother's a farmer's daughter, but I was I never, you know, lived on a farm. And I remembered this job was advertised when I was in in college, and I just thought, oh, I'll see if it's still available, and and it was. Gwen will be the youngest shepherd in the valley, and she'll be thirty-six. There's not many young shepherds coming into the job now. The not many want to live up, out by. They're, they're far too keen of night clubbing, and there's no night clubs about here. <laughs> Damn few anyway. Uh, the job just there's plenty of shepherding jobs going about if you look, but just not the young shepherds coming into the job now. Like so us, we're what 20 miles away from a supermarket, 10 miles away from petrol. Youngins don't much travel that distance now. I don't. Agreed. I don't. I don't. It's right in the centre of the lamin as, it, as we are now. The peak of the lamin. Lie down. April. Lie down. Well, it's one of the busiest times, but it's quite nice when it's like weather like this. Because I had to run my dog and trail and that, and I had to get the band right. But it's just the same, this whistling with this piece of tin with the hole in, it's just the same as whistling with your fingers. You have to put your tongue away in the right place to get the tune to come right. The same as whistling your fingers, you can tune it up or tune it down. And uh, get that shrill, shrill kind of sound when you want it. The dog's hearing's very good, you know. It doesn't take a it doesn't take a, a shout and a roar at a dog to make it listen. It. Well, just learn them under verbal commands first, and when you give them a verbal command to the left or the right, just follow on with the whistle. To the left or the right, you've got a whistle for either side and a whistle to stop and a whistle to come on. And as they break away, whichever side you want them off, just give them a little toot of the whistle and they soon pick it up. 
It's the way to learn them. It's not a secret, but I've never seen anybody else use it. Or I've never mentioned it to anybody. I just usually walk on the trails and whip it out my pocket and use it and, and put it away before I come back. It's never a thing that's been discussed. <laughs> Here's the litter. All eight of them. Oh, yes. Five dogs and three bitches. So there we are. Hmm. They're well reared anyway. Well, they got onto solid food fairly early, and they've never really looked back since then. I think if the bitch side's good on the background, you get a better chance of getting a good dog. This is like old Scott as a bean, this one. I'll just see what the sort of colours is in the mouth and that. It's just the thing I've always done. Grand strong legs I've got. Mm -hmm. Good bone. I don't like them with a lot of weight in my mouth. Never have. You don't want too gaudy a one. You want them by dealer here, you want a black and white one, you know. With the, but a lot of folk has tan in their dogs. But I'm not 100% keen on the tan. I like a black and white dog, really. <coughs> <coughs> Um, she's very difficult to um, be absolutely certain when she's in season. And um, when she is in season, it's only for a short time. And when that is the case, you've got to get on your bike, so to speak, very quickly and go to the side that you've chosen for her. She's milked well, she's kept a condition well. She's, um, of course, at the prime age of her, her breeding um, age. She's just over five years old. So she's experienced and yet still quite young. Uh, but she's made a very good job of this litter. I think perhaps the best that I've, I've had from her, this being her third. I, I just like it. I think it's quite a nice pup. It isn't nervous at all, which is a great thing with a pup. If they're nervous, they never much cop, right away through life. They even should when they get old. And if they're nervous, they're always nervous, I think. So this one's not going to any nerve, I don't think. But it's quite a nice one. It'll it'll fit the bill, I think. I think it's a nice one. A good dog on a on a sheep farm is just like a joiner with a hammer. It's it's a necessity. If you haven't got a good dog, you may as well just give it a buy. It's the biggest farm on the ranges. It's really two farms in one. It's Make It and, and Lime Burn run as one unit and it's in total about 5,500 acres. My father and my grandfather both worked with sheep. When I was 14, my brother worked with my father in Lamentime, he got a bad dose of flu and my father caught it as well, so I was sent out to help at Lamentime. Some dogs can't work together, some, you know, always wants to do the job or they get jealous of each other, so... Um... You just gotta kind of work out which dogs to take. When I was in Wales, there wasn't many women working on farms then, unless they were farmers' daughters. It was, you know, very unusual. Um, but there's more, there's more women working on the farms now. Well, supposedly I'm in charge, but <laughs> it doesn't always work. We agree to differ some of the time. When we're putting sheep and lambs away at the hill, Gwen might think one's too young to go out, and I'll say. It's decent enough weather, get it out, it's far better on the hill than in the fields. I think we just kind of discuss things, see what he says, what his opinion is about it, and see if we agree. And... There's been dog trials on for over 100 years yeah. in this country. Go down! And uh, they're getting better all the time, getting more professional. They're trying to make the border collie better, so they can handle the sheep at home on the farm better. My name is Ray McPherson. I've won the national, the international twice, and the world championship twice. I've won two television championships, and I've also won the four international driving championships. The first thing is the outrun, and they have to go in a pear-shaped outrun to be preferably, you know, not too wide at the start. Widening as they go out, and they shouldn't stop short at the top. They should go round to the balance of the sheep, whatever that may be, maybe past them or short of them, depending. But if the sheep are in the right position, they should be just at 12 o'clock right behind the sheep. And they should lift them gently and steadily with a bit of feeling for the sheep and bring them down the field as straight as possible. 
Next is the drive. Turn them around your back and you drive them for 150 yards and uh, through the obstacle and back to the pen. Good command on the dog, so he handles the sheep better, easier for the handler and uh, eat better for the sheep. You can run off either hand. You can come up off the left or the right. Some varies, see, one, lot of, one dog might run best off the right hand, another one run best off the left hand. And that's just up to the individual handler. A lot of dogs can do it fairly well on their own if they're well schooled and well trained and well balanced, but they need commands at times, no matter what dog it may be. You get some that's needing commands all the time and can do a fairly good run, but it's uh, a run that would be downpointed by the judge if there are too many commands. There is a slow deterioration in the type of dog that's being bred, and it's much more difficult for people to get a dog that will last the pace. It was the shepherds that made the Border Collie what it is today. With their careful breeding program, they improved it. And nowadays, a different type of dog is being bred to the one the shepherds bred. Everyone wants trial winners. And um, the trial winner in the lowlands doesn't get tested the same way as the hill dog does. The uh, principal objective, of course, for sheep dogs is, uh, is herding sheep and it's just really a, a relatively small number that actually make the grade to uh, that higher grade up to um, the, the trial field. But trying to achieve that, of course, is, is very interesting. I don't keep them unless they're, they're good at the top. And I want to win with them. That's the sole object of the, the getting the pup. Scotland maybe do that. <laughs> He's getting that way now. He's wanting to win it all. Everybody does. Lay down, lay down, get. Lay down. Let me get. Let me. Lay down, lay down. Everybody has their own way of training dogs, and there's no sort of set way of doing it. Um, you have a basic format, but you've got to sort of try to look at each individual dog because they have their own characteristics. Some dogs have very strong personalities, and you have to deal with that. Whereas others are quite timid but uh, given the course of time, they certainly come out and, and uh, do a very good job indeed. Nice good! Nice good! It's unpredictable what happens at these dog trails. Very unpredictable. It's all judged on time and points in time. Well, the dog didn't just hear right. I think it must have been the, the sort of lay of the field. He didn't listen right, quite right. I missed a set of gates when when uh, he should have been listening. But I don't think he was hearing properly, because usually he's a good listener. And the sheep was quiet, they had the sheep going well. And as the wind gets up a bit, it gets worse. But he should have listened, but he didn't. That's the way it goes. Back at Dave's home in Upper Cokerdale, there's plenty to occupy Meg, the collie puppy recently bought. Although less than three months old, she's already showing a sheepdog's instinct to round up anything in sight, but Dave's happy with her. Oh, I think she's quite a nice bitch. She's short coupled, she'll stand a lot of run. Short backed ones are like a short backed horse that last longer and more stamina, I think. Well, she was a bit stupid and I'd just left her in the kennel for a while and then I took her for the interview with the sheep once or twice and then she, one night, oh, about a month since, for three weeks since, she just started to shoo eye and pull herself together a bit. But she's a bit silly yet, but oh, that's me or nothing. She just needs steadying up and pulling together. But at the time will do that when she gets older, when she settles down a bit. You have to be firm with them all and and them pet on at them and that. Lie down, lie down. You see people clapping on at them and, lie down. and then it just breaks their concentration, that. If you tell them to do something right and then you start clapping on to them, they'll not know whether they've done it right or done it wrong then. I think you want to be firm with them and just leave them at that. Very tiring. I mean, these motorbikes have helped a little bit. I mean, my dogs, of all them, are riding the back of the bike. Even going up 
the, over the hill they'll sit on the back if I tell them to it saves them a little bit he has the motorbike he does he kind of he kind of gets them gathers them for me and we get them all gathered up and I usually bring them down the burn well he usually shouts the same there over there and I can't see them and I go where they are and we start um, he starts shouting at me <laughs> but we get the sheep eventually as long as you can put a dog back on this ground, you're, you're not too bad. Ask it to go back, stop what it's doing, and go for the back. It's, well, that's one of the main things you need in a dog out here. Usually the whistle, if it's like a bit of a windy day, um, the whistle is you know, a lot sharper and uh, uh, usually near at hand we use the voice and uh, from a distance we use the whistle. You've got to have kind of dogs that can kind of go blind, they say. You know, go. I think usually they can smell them as well, like the sheep once they get nearer. But if you can see them, you can kind of guide the dog, you know, to them. Oh, I think she's got a great potential. I think she'll make a great and do a great lot of good things, I think. Because she's any amount of power on sheep and she comes right up to them. And that's the thing you can't get in a young pup, but nowadays hardly. They usually lie in the way back, showing a lot of eye and never budging. And, you have to coax them to get them to come up to sheep. This one, you have to stop it. Well, I, when I take her out, you need an older dog to keep the sheep in, in, in close quarters, you know, because they don't want to get away. She has been away with the men, and she just wears them up. She doesn't uh, dive in and worry them or anything. She doesn't attempt to do that. She just wears them up. But you better wear an older dog to hold them up when you go with a pup. Because she's literally just a pup, yeah. Meg! Meg! Oh, I, I intend to breed pups of her. That's what I intend to do. Meg! I intend to breed pups of her. Where do we Scott? Scott. Oh, I'm pleased with her. Well, it's not really like, you know, crafts or anything like that. It's just really more, um, you know, just fun, just showing your, you know, your, your dog. We don't, you know, handle them professionally, or we just take them around. Every judge is different, you know. They, they've got a particular type of dog they like. They might like right rough-haired dogs or smooth-haired dogs, or you know, the um, black, white, and brown, or just black and white, you know, clean black and white. It just all depends on the judge, really, what they like. So you just have to show your dog and hope he likes that type of dog. Uh, I didn't get anything. I did well. He did. Pick me out, I was like fourth, but there's no fourth price. So, um, but I think she may be a bit lean. She's the type of dog I can't never put weight on her, unless she might, you know, when, once she's matured. But uh, maybe that might have been it. Instead of one man doing 500 sheep, which was adequate to get the proper uh, results from the sheep, they're putting 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 on one man. And he cannot, under any circumstances, handle 1,500 sheep by himself. So he gets a motorbike and he gets round them that way. A lot of these sheep are, are uh, herded with motorbikes and they're not got the same feel for people or dogs. Because when you're sitting on a motorbike, you can't do the shepherding properly. The best way to shepherd sheep is to walk them and you see all your sheep individually. It affects the dogs too. You're better walking, seeing your sheep and handling your dogs better. Now they're on quad bikes. A different type of dog is being bred to the one the shepherds bred. The type of dog that's being bred off these dogs isn't tested. It, it doesn't have to have tremendous stamina because it's, it's got a taxi waiting for it. And it doesn't have to have intelligence because um, it doesn't have to think and solve problems unaided. And this is very sad. When we lose the shepherds, we not only lose the dogs, but we lose all the skills that the shepherd had as well. Meg. Somewhere about eight, eight and a half months, somewhere about that. No, she's doing quite well. She's a wee bit headstrong. It's taken a little bit more handling than I would like, but she, she'll make the grade, I think. She just got good balance on her sheep. And when they stay locked on the sheep and, and not jump about and flap up and down and that, it's good balance. She's got good balance, her. 
thought, oh, well, she's any amount of power in her. And that's a built-in ability a dog has. If it's got power, it's got power, and if it hasn't, it hasn't. If you haven't got power and concentration in them, the, the sheep will just play with you. Because they can read it straight away in a dog what what its ability is, whether it can move them or, or they can just play with the dog. But if you get a one way control power, that's steady and, and plenty of power to move sheep, that's the one you want. Some of them's easy trained and that one hasn't been easy put into place because she's always tried to get a step further on you. But uh, the secret of it is just to get the right kind of dog that'll listen and a good stop on them. And some of them is and some of them isn't. That's all there's to it. There'll always be people to look after the sheep, or, but I don't know at the end of the day what'll happen because there isn't many young ones getting trained and they're just getting less and less. As long as there's sheep around, there will be shepherds, but um, a few, few and far between now. Things will, will never be the same. They'll never be as I knew them, but at the same time, I am so pleased that I was born soon enough to see the wonderful work that the shepherds did. But the sun's come out and it's, grass is growing and things are getting better as we go on. It's nice at the end of lambing time when the sun's out and the lambs are running about dancing and playing. going round the hill, setting sheep in in the morning, out at night. They're going out in the line and there's a lamb full on each ewe. It's a nice sight. Makes it all worthwhile. If I stand the dog on the right side, he goes to the right. If I stand the dog on the left side, he goes to the left. He will stay in the left or right. If I look in this direction here, he runs that way. Whichever direction I look, the dog runs. Tell the dog sheep, 
new other commands is given, new other commands. Leave the dog alone. He can do it much better than me. You know when you're doing a job and someone's telling you, just that way a bit, that way a bit, this way a bit, that way a bit. You hate that person. Leave the dog alone, he does it much better. The dog is trained to be as natural as possible. If the trees there, I could not see what he's doing. He does it himself. The dog starts, starts being trained about 10 months old. The dog starts being trained at 10 months. He's trained for almost two years. The dog is fully trained by three year old. No commands given. Hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. You don't want the dog running back and forth. If the dog's running back and forth, the sheep start running back and forth. Nice and straight. Just natural. It's just natural for the dog to do this. Natural. Bring them back. Simple. <laughs>